Hello, everyone. Um, to, uh, to all the delegates in the room and to all the viewers that are watching this session remotely, uh, welcome to Wireless Field F5 and uh, welcome back to uh, Motorola Solutions. Uh, my name is Sridham, Technical Marketing Manager in the uh, Enterprise Wireless LAN Business Unit at Motorola Solutions, and uh, I'm based off uh, San Jose. Um, first off, uh, I need, no, we need to thank uh, Stephen and the, uh, the Tech Field A team for inviting us back to uh, present this session uh, at, on Wireless Field A5. So uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, so quick look at the agenda for today. Uh, we're going to have a, this schedule is pretty packed up, but uh, hopefully we'll get through all the sessions in time. And uh, we'll also have enough time for, uh, for q and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, questions coming up. So, uh, yep. And then um, without much at all, just let's enjoy to uh, give an introduction about moral solutions. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sridham. Again, uh, welcome everybody to uh, our Wireless uh, Field 5. Happy to host you all here as uh, the expanded uh, team of the Motorola Solutions community. Um, hopefully, the next couple of hours are going to be exciting in terms of what you see. I'm just going to kick off this session um, talking about a few uh, mega trends that we see in the market that we are aligning our roadmap to. Uh, but before that, uh, like, you know, wanted to give you uh, all a brief background of Motorola Solutions in, um, in case you didn't know, like, you know, the Motorola Solutions, how it sits versus the mothership Motorola, Motorola Mobility, etc. So I'm going to just kick that session off. In terms of introduction, again, I'm Sanjoy Day. I'm uh, um, the product management lead uh, in the wireless business in Motorola. So without uh, much ado, uh, about two and a half years ago, January of 2011, uh, the mothership Motorola Inc. spun off its cell phone division, the cell phone business, and called it Motorola Mobility, which later on got acquired by Google uh, last year, uh, and renamed itself to Motorola Solutions, primarily with two lines of businesses. One is the government and public safety business, and one of it is the enterprise business. And there's a healthy dose of cross-pollination of technologies that go into the government side from the enterprise side and vice versa. Uh, and the vision and the mission is to be a leading communications provider in these two segments of the market as far as mobility and wireless is concerned. So both in government and public safety as well as the enterprise market. So, you know, um, wanted to touch upon a few mega trends, and, and hopefully some of you will um, kind of agree with these macro trends that are influencing the, the mobility market. Um, so back in 2007, uh, Apple started shipping its iPhone, right? And, uh, and something important happened from the infrastructure side in 2008, which is the 802.11n standard got ratified. And since then, the face of mobility has not been the same. We have seen a nonlinear growth in the whole wireless infrastructure, client, and the overall mobility market. So shortly thereafter, a couple of years ago, uh, like you know, the BYOD phenomenon started to gain traction uh, with a plethora of smartphones and, and tablets. Uh, you had uh, corporate employees, you had guest Wi-Fi users, all coming in with their own clients, starting to use uh, a Wi-Fi infrastructure. And uh, you know, of the 10 billion devices uh, that are being shipped in terms of handhelds and like you know, mobile phones, smartphones outfitted with, with Wi-Fi chips, uh, we actually on, on Motorola Solutions guest Wi-Fi networks from the data that we see. Every day there are about half a million to one million users that are users of our guest Wi-Fi network, right? Uh, so device explosion is, is a huge phenomenon and obviously leads to this exponential growth of the mobility market. But with that does come challenges, challenges around uh, onboarding of guest users, uh, secure access for both guest users as well as uh, your corporate employees. And that is important because the way people are using mobile phones today is very different from what it used to be three or four years ago. Uh, it started with pure web surfing, 
uh, it transcended to web 2.0, which is uh, social networking. And then the web 3.0 wave that is going to come around is people going to use uh, financial transactions on, on their mobile phones. So how do you provide a user experience that provides secure access as well as makes it easy for people to use smartphones or tablets on Wi-Fi networks, at the same time delivering a quality of experience. Like, if I'm a guest user today walking into, a say, a retail store, and I want to scan a QR code and get a product review in terms of video, how do you make that video experience or, or the usage experience for a guest user uh, efficient, smooth, effective on, the, on a mobile phone? Hopefully, some of the foundational technologies that we will show you, Sriram, Shiv, uh, Eric, later on today, will show you how it is easy to use uh, social media credentials, uh, loyalty app credentials, uh, to easily get onboarded on a guest Wi-Fi network. You'll see some of the uh, features like content caching, video caching on our infrastructure that makes easy for users to get a superior quality of experience on their, when they are using their mobile devices. So we talk about device explosion uh, that actually leads to a nightmare for IT, right? How do you manage this millions of phones, tablets, uh, handheld devices? How do you effectively troubleshoot problems that clients start reporting? As you know, uh, anytime there's a connectivity problem, there is, is some problem with an application Wireless is the first thing to get blamed, right? And so how do you make it easier for IT to go and troubleshoot a network effectively from their command and control center in a, in a data center or a NOC? Uh, you have to have the foundation technology of easily provisioning your infrastructure, roll out thousands of access point infrastructure, uh, and then be able to provision them, manage them, troubleshoot them effectively. And when you have the foundational technologies in place, that is when you can think about <coughs> delivering efficient and scalable uh, service delivery models. It could be cloud. It could be managed services. It could be an infrastructure that is managed from a command and control center in the NOC. Right? So hopefully, you will see some uh, glimpses or a sneak preview of some of the real-time troubleshooting, real-time provisioning and management uh, tools that we have uh, within the Motorola Solutions Wireless LAN portfolio that makes it easy for IT to be agile when it comes to the wireless LAN infrastructure. And then talking about infrastructure, uh, today we look at 802.11 as a primary means of wireless communication. At the same time, we actually feel that the age for what is loosely called the Internet of Things, um, Cisco calls it Internet of Everything, uh, that day is looming upon us within a couple of years, where people are going to be thinking about energy management, thinking about video analytics, thinking about locationing uh, a lot more closely as and when they develop their ROI models and, the, and the, uh, the business justification for these technologies. So one of our customers that we happen to be engaged with right now talks about a distributed enterprise for 2,500 locations and is putting in place a plan for a Zigbee-based energy management solution that saves them $1 million per year per location. So across, uh, or, or rather, uh, like, you know, $25 million a year across their 2,500 uh, distributed enterprise, right? And that is based on 802.15.4 Zigbee technology, right? As and when cell phones start getting shipped with Bluetooth low energy, you'll see people putting in, like, you know, Bluetooth-based uh, security infrastructure, Bluetooth-based locationing infrastructure to uh, address some of these next-gen applications. So all in all, you see a, what used to be traditionally 802.11 dominated wireless transcending to a world where you'll see a confluence of 
multi-RF technologies, multi-protocol infrastructure with the flexibility or expectation that everything can be still smoothly managed, provisioned, troubleshooted from your network operation center. Uh, and we are building up a roadmap uh, to gear up to this phenomenon of the smart infrastructure or the internet of things. And last but not least, with a plethora of these client devices, with a plethora of uh, users, with uh, like you know dense deployments, lot of access points, you see lots of data, right? It used to be gigabytes a few years ago. It's going to terabytes today, and even much more tomorrow. And with this data, like you know, what people can quite assimilate data. What they need are some meaningful insights, like the couple of things that influence, say, for example, a consumer's behavior in a store on how many dollars he or she spends uh, at, a, at a retail store. Uh, it could mean to an IT uh, operator for, like, you know, I'm not seeing a client on an access point for three days. What does it really mean for my, uh, for my network? Is there a problem in the network? Is there a problem with the client, problem with the application? So what people are really concerned with, with this big data initiative, are I need the couple of insights that influence my decision making or my customer's decision making at moments that matter. And we will show you some of the network analytics, some of the business analytics, location analytics, uh, web surfing analytics uh, built into our infrastructure that can enable some of these next-gen applications uh, around big data. As many of you may be aware, our foundational technology on which we build a lot of our scalable infrastructure, scalable architecture, is Wing 5. Right? That is our holy grail. That is basically what allows us to scale up to 10,000 access points per NOC appliance, all managed from a single pane of glass. And based upon this Wing 5 architecture, we have some advanced services around security, around locationing, around secure access for BYOD. Uh, some of these solutions are predicated upon the scalability of Wing 5 that also allows flexible deployment models, whether you want uh, an access point to act as a virtual controller in a single site, whether you want advanced services onboarded with a local controller, whether you want a wireless infrastructure all managed from that single NOC appliance sitting at your data center, or whether you want to enable cloud services, uh, Wing 5 is pretty much at the heart of it. right? So this was basically to to give you a, a brief preview of some of the trends and some of the like, you know, technologies that later on Eric and Sriram and Shiv are going to walk you through. So hopefully all of you will have a fun and exciting day. And as usual, feel free to ask questions if you have any.